So, hi, I'm Lorna from the Australian Tapping Institute. I'm the CEO and I love to come here to share with you more insights, more knowledge, more training, more tools, more techniques for helping you and your clients get the absolute most out of life, how to serve them and support them at the highest level, which is I know what all of you want to be doing, whether you're already an EFT practitioner, whether you're considering EFT, whether you're already a coach or a consultant or something that serves and helps other people on a day-to-day -day basis. I know that just like me and just like all of my students and all of our graduates, you want the very best for your clients. So let's have a conversation about procrastination in them, all right? We're going to talk about your clients in their space and how you support them. So Many of us, maybe I'll take a step back. So when I was a life coach, when I first started my coaching journey in like 2009, um, I know that I went into with the whole goal was I just want to help other people. I had not thought for a second about any of the work I needed to do with me. So we're going to park all of that. What I didn't expect was the conversations that I'd end up having with people. I didn't end up, I, I don't know what I thought I was going into, but I certainly knew I wanted to help people. So when I first got into the space and started working with clients, I worked a lot in the direct selling space into the um, direct selling party plan, call it what you will, but we all know that direct selling sort of space. And they were amazing, amazing people who kind of fell into almost having a business, many of them. They didn't go out on a Saturday afternoon thinking they would be in business by Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, they were signed up as a consultant in some sort of uh, direct selling product and then there was the expectation that they would they would start to build a business around this and they would start to really engage in what it is that they might want they'd obviously got sold some sort of dream and some sort of plan on the Saturday now many of them also went there and or, can, or joined into these sort of consultancy places because they really believed in the product and they really knew what they absolutely wanted so there was people sort of coming from from different space that I got to work with but what I really got to work with with these people was goal setting. It was a really amazing space for me to watch, analyze, look, listen, observe people on many, many different levels trying to decide what their goal was and how they were going to get there. And then observe what the blocks were in between. Because as you've got to imagine, when you Come into this with a great big goal and a great big dream and something that's really you and yours. You know what you want. You know what you want to achieve. When you kind of fall into it a little bit, there is then that is that that space of well, why do I want this and and what do I really want to have? So this conversation is about that isn't about the direct selling space. It's you as a consultant, as a coach, as a, a um, working with your clients on just being able to start to understand that when we work with our clients, they have great goals and they have great dreams and they have great desires, but there is a whole lot of blocks in the middle. And I know that we see it in our students, in our graduates, because we run a training academy, and I see that in our, in our students. There is this, the goal gets set, or they work with a client, or they do some work in the client space, and then when the client doesn't achieve what they said they were going to achieve, it's so easy for us to take it on that the problem's ours. I'm not a good coach. I'm not able to do this. Um, maybe I, I didn't set the goal right or maybe I didn't support them. It's really, really easy when our clients don't achieve or they don't follow through and they don't um, work on what they said they were going to for us to make it all about ourselves. And I don't mean that in a bad way either. There is an element of taking on ownership and responsibility for the work that we do, but I don't think it's necessarily healthy for us to take on the viewpoint that they didn't achieve their goal, so there's something wrong with me, my skill set, and how I do this. Generally, there is not. So let's take a bit of a deep dive into the psychology and what could possibly be going on for your clients to give you a better understanding of this and a better a better way of maybe uh, approaching it and understanding that there's other tools and techniques that you can use to help them to get to the, to the space where they want to where they want to go to. 
So the, com the conversation and the topic of this, this call was about procrastination in your clients. So for me, when I do work with clients in that space and we start to talk about goals and what we want to set, when they don't get to what they want to or when they don't achieve it or when something else got in the way or something became a priority, they just didn't get there. To me, that signals that there is some sort of avoidance for them, probably a bit obvious, there's an avoidance strategy going on that they're playing and they've got a distraction strategy going on. Strategy just mean the process they go through. So not, not so bad, a big word. But yeah, there's an avoidance strategy and a distraction strategy. Now, the avoidance strategy is so many other things become more important than the thing that they set out to do. They, You may have worked with them and they're going to, I don't know, whatever it is, whatever they're going to do for this week, they're going to make X number of calls or are they going to go to the gym X number of times or are they going to eat this particular food plan? Are they going to make X number of cold calls in their business? Are they going to make warm calls? Are they going to rejig something in their sales funnel? Whatever it is, you've got a target for them and they've said that they're going to do something. Now, as the week progresses, they either avoid the, the activity or they get totally distracted and let everything else and other things take their priority, take their time and take their attention. Now, sometimes there's really, really obvious reasons for this with our clients. Sometimes it's, you know what, they don't want it badly enough. What they said was their big outcome and their big goal and their big thing, maybe that's not it. Maybe they just don't have their why clear enough maybe they don't have the purpose of what they're doing clear enough for them maybe there's just not enough energy and drive and and hunger and motivation and excitement about it now I found that a lot in that direct selling space I said people were people were sold into the dream on a Saturday afternoon they became business owners by Sunday morning and then they needed to try and pull it together in how it was going to energize them and bring them together now, two quick examples there. One of them, or one of them is my favorite one. There was a girl there and she'd stood up and I can't remember whether she was Nutramedics or Intimo, I can't remember. Because I used to go along and actually coach them in this space. I can't remember which one it was. Anyway, she was there and she was um, doing her whole spiel. And, you know, I've, I've come into my business and I'd really like a new car and I'd really like the travel because the travel is really good. And this was her sales spiel virtually to her, her people who were sitting in the room who she was going to encourage to A, either sign up with her or B, um, buy some of her products. When I heard her doing this, we I, I then started to really listen to her and realise her, her lack of drive. Then when I saw her at training a day or two later, she came to one of the trainings that we were running. I challenged her directly and said, like, tell me what you want, tell me what you want. She didn't want the car, nor did she want the travel. She wanted the money to have a breast augmentation. She wanted new big boobs. This young woman wanted the cash and that's the sole reason she was in her business was because that's exactly what she wanted. Now for her to be saying to people or even to saying to herself, right, I want this because I want the car and I want the travel, there was no congruence with her and her energy of what she wanted. She was spouting off somebody else's spiel. When I got her to engage and go, but you want new boobies, this, this is what you want, you want new breasts, you want an augmentation, that completely changed her business. So when she stood up in front of people and, and started to talk about her why, her why was genuine and authentic. So where your clients may, or may probably aren't in anything that looks like a direct selling space, it does highlight that unless they know their why for being in business, it's going to get tough. And any goal you set is going to be challenging for them. Now, I went into my business purely for freedom. I want the freedom to travel. I want the freedom to come and go as I please. I want the freedom to kind of do, do whatever I want when I want. I have a very strong structure. My virtual assistant and I work on my calendar and it's all set up and structured because then I know if I get everything done, then I can go play. I can go and have my freedom. So I know my why for being in business. If you haven't connected your clients strongly emotionally to that, chances are they're going to struggle and that procrastination is going to come up. So have a look at their goals that they're writing. Is the goal that you've got them looking at 
Is it really part of their big picture outcome? Is it really part of that big why that they're in business? Make sure it's connected to that. Do they know why they want those goals? Do they know why that's important to them? Do they know what it's going to bring them from a satisfaction level of engagement? What's it going to bring to them? I worked with another client and her goal was she wanted to buy a caravan. She wanted to be able to take the family on holidays whenever she wanted to. So her big why for her business was she wanted to pay for that caravan. Not because she wanted the caravan, because what it meant to her to take her and her husband and her kids away regularly for adventures and fun and excitement and things that they could do together, make memories together, that's what it was all about for her. And too many of us or too many people when we're in the space of setting goals and things, and even if it's weight loss goals and things like that, there isn't a big enough why behind it. So that's the first part. You want to you get them into really engaged energetically and emotionally to what they want their goal for. Second reason they could be procrastinating is the stuff that we use. So obviously I use EFT tapping. If you're new to EFT tapping, it is this energy psychology and energy um, therapy modality, probably a better word that we use. We talk our clients, we, we talk a kind of a talk therapy from our clients and think of it more of a, a counseling sort of conversation. It's a talk therapy conversation, but we actually tap on our body to shift and move the energetic blocks stuck in behind all of that sort of stuff. Now, let me give you an example of how that works. So the not so obvious ones that your clients could be procrastinating on those goals. Think of if you are a wellness coach, a weight loss coach, um, someone that does body image, body, um, body transformation, uh, all those sorts of things. Think of the safety aspect for your clients when they're looking at losing weight, looking at transforming their body, looking at obviously ha having a better sense of wellness and feeling and looking better brings in a different level of attention from people. So we use EFT in that space to start to figure out where our clients don't feel safe with the weight loss. What is the fear sitting behind it? What is the fear sitting underneath it? We talk in terms of getting out in front of it or getting underneath it. So we would use tapping with a, a, a wellness client. We would want to be thinking about what does it mean when they do achieve their goal? What changes in their life when they reach that goal? Typical things are, I said, I'm going to get more attention. Um, is my partner going to be displeased with me because suddenly I'm looking pretty cool, pretty hot? Are they then going to get insecure and then the conversations start, am I the fat sister and suddenly I'm not the fat sister? Where do I fit into my family? So from an EFT tapping perspective, we use that tool to get in underneath those unconscious conversations people have got going on, the unconscious fears to help them to break away what's holding them or what sends them to the avoidance or what sends them to the distraction. Because when we can unplug those, and get the, the fears, et cetera, out of the way, then the goals start to look at and go, yes, this is really what I want. No, it's not. And they get to transform that goal from a different perspective because it, you've taken away the, the fears, you've taken away the concerns, you've taken away the, the stuff that happened in childhood, the unwanted attention, whatever it is. Let's then step into a business space of the drivers underneath, the stuff sitting underneath that we would use EFT for, for our business clients to get them out of procrastination. So when it comes to business, there are a number of things that I have recognized and noticed that goes on for business owners. So yep, they've got themselves into a business. They know that they, that, you know, a bit, bit of a focus on what they want. Then when it comes into, they start to feel like a fraud or they start to feel an imposter. Now, when you were new to your coaching, when you were new to whatever skill set you use, however you serve and support your clients, when you got into that, there's chances are you may have had a little bit of fraud or a little bit of imposter syndrome going on too. So expect that from a business client, they've got that going on as well. So again, we want to get in with EFT underneath that and start to figure out and, and break apart this imposter syndrome. The other thing that happens with business owners are, Am I worthy to earn the money that I say I want to earn? As coaches and consultants, we work with people on a really 
who really want to achieve things and really want to strive and really want to make a difference in this world when we're doing business coaching, those people have to feel worthy and have to know that they deserve the fees that they want to charge or the money that they want to attract, the clients that they want to attract. So when we use EFT, we get in underneath all of the fears, the imposter, the worthiness, I can't do this, um, all the other dialogue. Remember, it's all about the dialogue, the unconscious dialogue, the unconscious conversation chatter that goes on in their head all the time. So that's our best way of getting in to procrastination is work out with the avoidance, work out the distraction, start to work out do their goals really align with, with their true values of what they want their world and their life to be about, get them to engage in that. Then if you don't have another tool, perhaps you might want to consider EFT tapping as another tool, another modality that, because that's how I started. I had life coaching and NLP. When I added tapping into the mix, me and the, the transformation, the shifts in my clients was phenomenal, phenomenal. So you might want to be thinking about doing that. When you take away the fears and the underlying stuff and those dialogue conversations in the head that aren't serving them, then they get to see their goal in a very, very different manner. And I bet you then see that the procrastination, avoidance and distraction behavior does not continue to happen. So that's a, a, an overview of how we would use tapping to help a, will your clients get over procrastination. I hope you can apply some of this to your clients now and really start to look at what's going on for them. I'm so thrilled to have been able to come here again and share with you. Have a great day.